Hey guys, it's Jeff from Pressure Luck, and today we're going to make a dish that is for carnivores. Yes, meat lovers, rejoice, because I have something for you that's gonna melt in your mouth even quicker than Barbara's butter. So there are so many different kinds of meats you can put in your Instant Pot with incredible results at the end, but this one, this one is the ultimate in terms of shred apart, tender, and absolute carnivore bliss. Guys, we're making not tall, but short ribs. Short ribs right in the Instant Pot, and I'm telling you, it's one of those cuts of meat that it's just, oh, oh, amazing. So my short ribs is gonna have a sauce that's gonna be kind of a mix between like a French burgundy style and an Asian style. I'm gonna mix the two together, and it's gonna make this amazing, supreme sweet and savory sauce and it's awesome and the flavor is just gonna be incredible throughout but guys the thing about short ribs is you would eat these things and think they take all day to make and braise and people are gonna be like oh my gosh this is so tender but guess what it's so easy to make just don't tell them make them think it was really hard I won't tell them if you won't all right so guys what are we waiting around here for let's just go right to the instant pot and make the easiest and the most tender shred apart amazing short ribs Ever. So I'm gonna begin by making my sauce, and I'm gonna start that with one cup of beef broth, I'm using a low sodium, as well as one cup of a dry red wine, a Pinot Noir is great. I do suggest you use a good bottle of red wine as opposed to red cooking wine for this recipe. I wanna add in a third of a cup of oyster sauce. You can find this in most supermarkets, in the Asian section, or in any Asian market, or I'll link it online, but it's pretty commonly found in many, many supermarkets. And don't worry, it's not oystery or anything of that nature. It doesn't taste like seafood at all. It has a wonderful, savory flavor to it. A third of a cup of this stuff. Two tablespoons of a light brown sugar. One teaspoon of Chinese five spice. You can find this in most markets in sometimes the spice section or sometimes the Asian section. And a tablespoon of crushed or minced garlic. And now let's whisk that around in our bowl to make sure everything's nice and combined. And do this for about 30 seconds. Great. There's our sauce and we're gonna now set this aside. We also want to take a few loose spices and then add them to a metal tea bowl or a spice bag that's sieved. And this is actually going to work great and I'll link it in the recipe. This thing is an amazing use for not just tea, but again, for just containing spices that are loose. So I want to take three star anise or anise star or, or you know how I like to call it, chenise, whatever you want to call it. Take three of these things, alright? They look like little starfish. You see? They look like this. But don't worry, they don't smell like starfish. They actually smell like black licorice, which I actually hate. But don't worry, it's not going to taste like black licorice. It just adds amazing flavoring. I also want some whole cloves, five of them sounds good, and I also want one whole cinnamon stick which I'm going to break into pieces, just like this. Alright, let's add these to the middle tea bowl or the spice bag. So I'm going to open this guy up by unlatching it, add in the star anise, the cloves, and the cinnamon stick, and just try to fit in as much as you can, and if it doesn't fit just mash it up a little bit until it does. And then now let's just seal this up. And presto, there are our spices inside of, oh, look at that, a little metal tea bowl, and it's gonna be so easy to fish out. Now guys, these spices you might recognize have the exact same ones I used in my pho recipe, or pho if you wanna call it pho, but it's actually pronounced pho. And if you're watching this on closed captioning, it's gonna say something differently. I'm just warning you right now. These are actually wonderful spices, and it's gonna make the flavor of the short ribs and the sauce dynamite. Now I wanna take one large Spanish onion, and then quarter the onion into four large wedges long way, so it looks just like this, into four little segments here. All right, set that aside. Okay, and now let's focus on the star of our show here, and that's going to be our short ribs. Now, I got these from Costco, and these are boneless short ribs, guys. Now, you totally do not have to use boneless ones. You can absolutely use bone in, but you know what? I was looking for regular short ribs with the bone, and these are what I found at Costco, and Costco's never steered me wrong in terms of meat, so I think these are gonna be wonderful. You don't have to even worry about the bones, but Again, totally, totally fine if you want to use bone in two. It's going to be completely the same cooking method. The only difference between the two is I'm using about three and a quarter to three and a half pounds worth of this because they're boneless. Whereas if you have the bone already in the short ribs, use about five to six pounds because you have to account for the weight of the bone inside the short ribs, which are here or are removed. So after you remove the bone, it's going to be about three and a quarter to three and a half pounds worth of the meat itself. All right? Again, you can totally use boneless or bone in. Just go between five to six pounds if this bone's in and three and a quarter to three and a half pounds if it's boneless. And Costco has such good meat. Okay, so now I want to season my short ribs, and that's going to be super easy and basic. I want to use some kosher salt. Use the kosher salt if you can. It has nothing to do with being Jewish or anything of that nature. It just adds amazing flavor. So to season it with some kosher salt, and then rub it in. All right. And you saw I just sprinkled it on top, and I'm rubbing it in. And then, of course, wash your hands, and then add in some black pepper. Just sprinkle some of that on there too. Just like this is fine in terms of the sprinkling. And then rub that in throughout. 
All right, and now that we have this side done, we're gonna flip everything over and then season the other side. And again, wash your hands in between each time you touch anything after you're touching the meat. And we are nice and coated on each side with some wonderful seasoned salt and some black pepper, and that's all we need. All right, guys, let's go to the Instant Pot. So now I'm gonna come down on my control panel and hit the saute button, and I'm gonna give it some heat, and I'm gonna make sure I adjust it so it's on the more or the high setting, and just wait about two minutes until it heats up. And then after about two minutes of the pot heating up, I'm gonna take my short ribs in batches and then place them in there and sear them on each side for about one to two minutes. About a minute on each side should be enough, and then when that happens, just flip it over, and you see that? Some beautiful color and searing. All right, it might want to stick to the pot a little bit, but that's normal when you sear, and then do the other side for a minute. And then after searing on the other side for a minute, you're gonna see that our meat looks perfect on both sides. So just take a bowl here, a plate, and just place all of the meat that we've seared in it. And then we'll just repeat this until all of our short ribs have been seared. And don't worry about the bottom of the pot with the salt being caked onto it. It's gonna be fine, we're gonna deglaze it. And our final piece of meat has now been seared. And there's our final piece of meat right there. And you see how the side is still kind of raw? That's perfect. We don't want it to be cooked yet because it's going to be cooking in the pot. It should look exactly like this. Seared on both sides with the meat still totally raw in the center. I don't like that word raw. Let's just say it looks really super pink. All right? Much nicer. So you'll see after we've seared all of our meat that the bottom of the pot has a bunch of kosher salt and pepper caked onto it. So what I want to do is I want to take some of our sauce mixture here, just a little bit of it, and pour it in there. And I now take a spatula and deglaze the bottom of the pot. It's going to come right up. Look at that. Perfect. Nothing now stuck on the bottom of the pot. No worries about anything burning. Okay, next step. So let's now take our onions that we've wedged here, like into quarters, and place each one in the bottom of the pot just like so, and let's place that metal T-ball right in the center. So now let's layer our short ribs on top of the onions in the pot. It's okay if they wobble a little bit, it's fine. Let's do it like in a crisscross fashion. Perfect. And we're gonna pour the remainder of our sauce all over our short ribs. And now it's time to secure our lid and cook. So easy. Get my lid on top. Make sure I'm in sealing position. And now that we're ready to pressure cook, let's come down to the control panel and hit the keep warm cancel button. Then hit the manual or the pressure cook button, depending on your model. And I wanna go guys for 45 minutes on high pressure. That's it. And now that we're done, we're gonna allow a natural release for 15 minutes. That means this is gonna count up to 15 minutes. You'll just see one in a five on this little display here. And then we're going to finish it with a quick release. So don't do anything for 15 minutes and then quick release. And now that 15 minutes of a natural release have passed, you see it counted to 15, we're gonna do a quick release. And the pin just dropped, so let's take the lid off. And there's our short ribs. Okay, a couple last final steps. Now I'm gonna take my short ribs and they're gonna be very, very tender. You're gonna see they're gonna to wanna to fall apart. So just be careful and transfer it now to a serving bowl. And get that metal tea bowl out of there with the spices too. We don't want that anymore. So just, you know, empty it, discard it, clean it off, save it for another day. Some of it might fall apart as we transfer them, and that's a good thing, guys. We want it to be nice and tender and shred apart. It's gonna be amazing. Just be careful when you transfer it into a serving bowl, you see? And there is our beautiful and perfectly cooked, super tender, melt-away short ribs. All right, guys, now let's focus on the sauce in here and let's thicken it up a bit. So now to thicken my sauce up, I wanna come back to the control panel, hit keep warm, cancel, and then hit the saute button once more and make sure it's again on the more or the high setting. And we're just gonna give it about a minute or so of heating up until the sauce begins to bubble. And now while it's coming to a simmer, and before we add our cornstarch slurry, I'm going to add in about a quarter of a cup worth of honey. And now that we're bubbling, I'm gonna add in the cornstarch slurry. And immediately stir that around in the pot and it's gonna make our sauce thicken up a bit into a little bit of a glaze almost. Let it bubble in there for about a minute and then we're gonna turn the heat off. So if I wanna come back to the control panel, hit keep warm, cancel. And now that our bubbles have died down, look at this guys, the sauce has become perfectly so of a glaze consistency. Now let's pour this over our short ribs and we're gonna be ready to serve. And look at our beautiful short ribs. I'm gonna pour our beautiful sauce right over it. And I'll make sure all of our short ribs are nice and coated. And if you want to, you can also skim off some of the fat from the meat. And look at this, guys. It's gonna fall apart. All right, I have some guests to serve this to, so let's see what they think. And let's serve it on up. Okay, so I have my buddy Brian over here, and Brian is a foodie. 
and he loves a lot of good restaurants in Long Island. Knows a lot of good places. So Brian, I want you to take some. This is completely not staged, and I don't want any special treatment from you, even though you're my friend, and even though you like the Mets just like I do. So try, take some of that. And I need a, an honest review here. First of all, look at that. Oh, it's nice and tender looking. All right, so Brian, what are we thinking? You could pull it with your fork. You could actually cut it with your fork. Okay. Very tender and very flavorful. Red wine, you can definitely taste the red wine. Okay. It's also good. Really good. What are we thinking, Richard? Oh, wow. Mmm. Very tender. You can taste the Asian taste. I guess it's the five spice. Yeah, it's perfect. It's like fall off, you know, there's no bone, but. It wouldn't fall off of one if it had one. A good fat marbling to it that's, that's tasty. Like a nice short rib. Yeah, you know. very good. This is pretty amazing. I saw my for myself. See how this came out. My first time making it. I just kind of came up with the sauce on my own. So, let's see. It, it, it does completely fall apart, though. I mean, it's awesome like that. Good. It couldn't be cooked any better than it's cooked. No way. It's exactly what you want in a short rib. The sauce is like a sweet and savory sauce. It definitely has an Asian flavor to it, but also has like a red wine flavor. It's almost as if like a French style type sauce met an Asian one, if that makes any sense. I would say if you want the sauce even sweeter, add a couple more tablespoons of light brown sugar or even more honey, that's fine. But, mm, it's good. Oh, it's good. Look at this, short ribs, short ribs, and no bone to deal with. If you have a bone in there, that's fine too, because you can just pick a bone that way. But, mm, it's amazing, it's outrageous, and oh, I think you're really, really gonna enjoy this one, guys, and it's so ridiculously easy. So guys, if you want easy recipes with a video to accompany each one, go to pressurelowcooking.com and go to any recipe you want there. Also, like me on Facebook, facebook.com slash pressurelowcooking. It's very good to have that for notifications on new recipes. And of course, add pressure luck for YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, all that stuff. And guys, thank you so much. And you know, if you're short, just have short ribs. And if you're tall, have short ribs. Mm. Hey guys, it's... <laughs>